So it's going to be brief. The rest of the class is just going to be you practicing. So and I'm going to follow how it is here. So section E, F, and G, if I'm not mistaken. I've created a worksheet on this. I just picked three or two questions from this section uh, to make it easier for you to write on. And I'm almost done with the other one. So while you're working on this, I'll create the other one. Like I said, these are easy stuff. They're not even supposed to be mentioned. However, our IGCSE statistics do not take care of some of these uh, vocabularies. So I don't want to assume everybody knows what district is, what continuous is, and you know, just to be aware of it. Okay, so that's the only reason we are mentioning it. And it's gonna be brief because I'm just gonna go through with what is in here. I'll send you a screenshot of this, so you're welcome to write a note for yourself if you wish, only if you wish, like I said, otherwise just print the screenshot for reference. And of course, it's also in your book. So while you're working on this particular one, I'll be uh, finalizing the other one and get it printed. If you are not able to do it in class, you can do it at home. The idea is when you come back on Thursday, we are able to go to the last topic. So we are, we are not moving so slow on statistics because some of these things are just you know, rush things, okay? Hopefully we are able to make up some of the time we wasted in a differential equation and the likes. And of course some of the Saturdays we have missed. So the idea is to go through this on Thursday, Friday. If possible, everything. Otherwise, by Monday, we finalize this. Because the weekend I have work. There's art day something. Yeah. So we well, can't meet because I have to be here by 10.30 to 1. We also have, to we also have something here. We also have something too. Okay, yeah. so it's really, it's really annoying. Well, uh, Chinese New Year break is around the corner, so we can meet. Well. Anyway, so by Monday, we'll be able to finish, finalize this. It's just going to be a lot of computation, a lot of calculation, a lot of calculator stuff. And, uh, you know, so if you're able to complete this on Monday, then from by Tuesday, we can start something more interesting, which is the correlation and regression analysis. And that we can complete over Zoom on the break. And uh, okay, maybe I'll show you where we are from 6. So if we are able to finish, we have done the probability aspects. Okay, so by, t by Tuesday, I want us to have checked all of this. I copied this exactly from the syllabus, so I'm following that, okay? So if you're able to complete all that, what will be left will be correlation and regression, uh, discrete and continuous random variable, and probably some other probability distribution, probability density function. That's what will be left. Those are the three chapters in the other book. And my goal is that during the break, we are at least able to mention some of this or done with it, so that when we come back, we just have some little stuff. Maybe like a week or two, if we're able to work very well during the break, uh, we might even be able to complete everything by February, if we can work together and fast. So that's worst case scenario mid March. Worst case scenario mid March. So the rest of the March and April could be for revision. By which we will have it early March so that we have about seven weeks at least to go through past questions and try to recall some of the things we might have forgotten. Okay? And of course, to get you familiar with uh, paper three style questions. All right. So I'm going to go through it quickly. Uh, Survey is not yours. You can see the color is for I am AI. So it's not for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So this is the last set of exercises you did before. This one. So let's just quickly uh, talk about this using the book. So this sec the next three sections is divided into three districts, which could be simple. Or group and continuous. Okay, 
we talked about discrete data yesterday as a data uh, that can assume a particular value, continuous a range of value. Okay. So in the presentation of your table and the likes, you can you can fall into these cate three categories. So the first one in the book is talking about organizing data. That's why I said this is familiar. Everybody knows tally system. Everybody knows frequency. Am I right? And of course, relative frequency. Relative frequency just like the probability, uh, a fraction of the total, basically. Okay. So I'm not going to waste time on that. Uh, the tally system. Some of the the warning that I would like to give is that. When you're using the tally system, please do not count like this in organizing your data. Maybe like one, two, three, four. To avoid errors, do not say one, two, three, four. Then you come here, one, two, three, four. No, don't do that. What I did in high school to minimize error is to mark each item that I see, like I'm doing my attendance. I'm not going to count, you know, uh, how many girls, how many boys. I'll come to Nakita, I go to her name, check. I come to Karen, I go to her name, check. With that, you can be rest assured that you are minimizing possible errors. Okay? So, if, instead of doing this, one is the first thing I see, mark. The next thing I see is three, mark. If I'm going like that. The next thing again, one. The next thing again, two, followed by four, and so on. Okay, because this is simple, of course, data. Imagine having like 50 data, and you have to count how many 28 you can see. They are scattered all over. And while you are counting, you might have unintentionally just missed one out, or count one twice. But if you are checking one by one, so one thing I also like to do is, once I check the first row, I cross, I, I, I cross them as I'm checking. Or one, I mark. Two. So even if someone calls my attention to something, I've already checked the last thing that I've counted. Do you understand that? We are in the example everywhere is supposed to be quiet. What if somebody just mistakenly dropped their water bottle? And you get distracted. And you're already on data 38 out of 50. You're not sure if you counted the last one or not. Then you have to start all over again. And that will lead to some unnecessary pressure or whatever. Oh my god, no, there's no time and things like that. You don't want that to happen. Okay? So please. Just just some idea. So no need to waste time on this. This is something you already know. This is called a frequency table. Of course, you have your data. The tally follows immediately, not the frequency. Because it is from the data that you mark the attendance, if I may use that word. It is from the attendance you can compute how many times you were present or absent. Not the other way around. Do you understand? Because I've seen students over the years, from data, they go to frequency, then they write the tally. How is that possible? The tally is to make it easier for you to write your frequency. Okay? So, and the relative frequency is just this divided by this. Just like that. At the end of the day, your summation of relative frequency should give you what? One. So, when displaying the district data, we have uh, one of the forms is a column graph. Okay? So the data are here. This is like your bar chart. Everybody knows bar charts, right? Just make sure the width are the same. Take note of this. The frequency of the data is red, like this. The column widths are equal. And the column height represents that. The gap between the columns uh, indicate that the data is district. This is one, this is two. It's not continuous. Continuous, they will stick together. Understand? And make sure the gap are the same also. You don't have to be two OCDs by measuring. But it is expected that you be given a normal line graph. So it's easier to see. But when you are doing your class activity, you don't have to be two OCDs to measure it. Let's just, you know, review some fundamental stuff. Understand? But of course, it's up to you. So the mode of a data, we all know what mode is, right? The highest, uh, the, the data with the highest frequency. The mode is not the highest frequency. I've had students in the past also mix that up. You give them a table, X and F. We're going to frequency distribution in the next section. Then you appreciate a lot of this. Maybe one, two, three, four. And you have seven, two, eleven, one. 
when you ask students the mode, Karen, what is the mode? What is the mode of this the, the frequency uh, the table? Just keep track. But the what? Eleven. That's exactly what I'm saying. The mode is not the highest frequency. The mode is the data that appears most. This is the number of appearance. So it's like, oh, Brandy appeared seven in the tournament. Seven times, maybe substitution, okay? Oh, Verna appeared twice. Uh oh why is that, sorry. <laughs> Lillian, maybe appeared, no, Lillian doesn't play football. So Lillian should be here. Lillian appeared once. <laughs> okay, so let's say Colista appeared 11 times. So 11 is not the mode. 11 is that person that appeared most. So this is just telling you how many times they appear. This is the name of the people that appear this number of times. The raw data that you are looking at here is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the raw data that was summarized in this table. So when they ask you mode, the one that appeared most, which one do you see most? Three. That 11 is just telling you how many times it has appeared. So the mode is not highest frequency. The mode is the data with the highest frequency. So we have to be very careful. So in this table, Karen, over to you again. Which of these value is the mode? Two, because you can see. So the frequency which is nine is not the mode. Okay? So in this case, it will be the highest part. Understand? So this is the column uh, graph. When asked, because I put here draw column graph, this is all I needed to do. Understand? Uh, I tried to draw a line like this, but I couldn't, so help me out on that. Then, another important thing we're going to be talking about later is the uh, shape or the distribution of your data. You will be talking about symmetric, especially in normal distribution. I will get, tell you more about that later. So when the distribution of your data looks like this, whereby it's like everything towards the left and right are almost the same, it's not too much on the left, too much on the right, and we say it's, 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 it's uh, symmetric. Of course, you know what the symmetry is, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So we say this distribution is symmetric. The distribution here skewed negatively. It's skewed negatively. So it means that you have them going downward towards the left side. This skewed positively. So you see, it's stretching towards the positive side of x-axis, so to speak. So when you draw your column uh, graph that I just mentioned, the next comment might be, describe the distribution. Then you look at it. Is it symmetric? Does it skew negatively? Or does it skew positively? Understand? Almost there. Now, outlier as the name implies, out. Away from everyone. You draw your column graph, maybe the next number is zero, 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 zero. Then suddenly everybody's here. So this is like the outcasts. So you might be asked, after you draw your distribution, you do your observation, idea outliers. We will do a lot of computation on this in the next section as well. This is just to mention it. You don't have to worry so much. Other than just observe, can you see any from your column graph for now? Understand? And you can see there's an additional information here which I love so much. If the outlier is a genuine piece of information, it should be retained for analysis. If, when that happens, I'll let you know later. However, if it is found to be a result of an error, then there's no point. Okay? Just have that in mind. Uh, we don't want to waste too much time. I'll send you a screenshot of this if you need to, but there's no need to. Uh, what percentage? These are some of the things you did IGCSE days, so there's no need to waste time. So I've uh, brought two of these. Two of these are included. Now, I mentioned that your discrete data could be simple or group. Okay? So this is the group one. I like how it was put in different section here. You see, they are not continuous data. They are also district data. But uh, let me give you an instance why we put data in group. Uh, sometimes there are some values that are not represented. 
and to avoid having zero on the column graph. Understand? Which will lead to the outlier you can see on the on the graph. Rather, you put it in a group. In a in a in a joking way, I could say so that nobody will feel bad or someone will not feel bad. For example, I'm talking about age. And I don't want anyone to know that maybe Brandy is the youngest in the class. If I start asking, 11 year old, 12 year old, everybody's wondering who's gonna be the first to raise their hand, right? Or who's gonna be the last person to raise their hand so you know, oh my God, that is the oldest among us. Rather, I could say, if you are between 11 and 16, raise your hand. You don't know who is 11, 12, or 13. In fact, 11 to 16 is about five, six, six groups of eight, right? Two people might end up raising their hands. And they don't need to tell us that, oh, I'm 15 years old or I'm 11. Actually, I just clocked 11 yesterday. They don't need to tell you that. So there are reasons why we grow. And you can see that the age is a value too. But then we can still put it in a group. Understand? So things like that is one of, so when we have a group data, you cannot talk about mode. You can talk about modal class. Okay? Modal class. Which class does the mode belong to? It's a class. It's a group. Oh, which of this group has the highest frequency? Maybe it's the group of 11 to 15. So we call that modal class. Understand? So that's just uh, that. We have what we call the class interval. We have done this in IGCSE days, I believe. And then we have about two questions to do here also. Then the continuous one, which is the last one. We talked about continuous data as a data that cannot assume a value yesterday, isn't it? Okay, you can talk about a range of values. So, for our continuous data, we put them in form of what we call the class interval as well. Then we talk about the class width. Uh, according to your syllabus, I'm seeing on equal class width. When I see a question like that, I'll let you know. What do we mean by unequal? You can have 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29. These are equal class width. The class width is also called the class size. How many are here? You can see there are 10 each. 0 to 9 is 10 groups, right? 10 to 19 is also 10. It's possible you have an equal 0 to 9, 10 to 15. 16 to 13, for whatever reason, this gives you an equal, okay? Uh, if, if, we, if I come across anything like that in the question, I'll let you know. But your, your syllabus says something about unequal as well. So we have to have that in our mind. But for now, this is for the equal class uh, side. So in that case, we can use our column graph. You can see the column graph. You can see the frequency, uh, just histogram. You don't need to call it frequency histogram. Just histogram. I'm sure we are aware, we are familiar with histogram in the past. Please let me know if this is the first time you are hearing some of this thing, which is why I do not want to assume everybody knows, but just just look through it again, but in a rush, like very fast. Aha. So let's see. Uh, class interval. Da da da. Okay. No, no need to waste so much time on that. Okay. Maybe I can play this. Just one example in the book, uh, and after that, I think is the is the question. So there's no need to waste too much time. Let's play this. Can we make it better? Yeah, I'll try to do that. Boundary, so there is no overlap between the intervals. 
In the previous example, we used a tally column to count the data. In this case, it is probably unnecessary as there are only 20 data values. Instead, we count the frequency of each variable directly. We look for those starting with 3, then those starting with 4, and so on, until we complete the table. You can check you have counted the data correctly by adding the frequencies. The result must equal the total number of measurements in the sample. Since the data is continuous, we use a histogram to display the data. A histogram is similar to a column graph, with the variable length in centimetres on the horizontal axis and frequency on the vertical axis. However, because the data is continuous, we join the columns together. The values at the edges of each column indicate the boundaries of that class interval. On a histogram, the modal class corresponds to the highest column. In this case, the modal class is lengths greater than or equal to 4 cm and less than 5 cm. More lobsters have lengths between 4 and 5 cm than any other length interval. In part C, we study the distribution. First, look at the shape of the data. You should see that the graph is stretched out on the right-hand side, or positive side, so the data is positively skewed. Now look for any outliers. There are no rectangles which are isolated from the rest of the data, so there are no outliers. Okay. <clears throat> for those that have done Instagram before, this is not new to you. At least in IGCSC or even maybe middle school, form two, I'm not sure. Did you do Instagram in form two? Or was it form three? No, okay. it wasn't. It was IGCSC days. All right. But anyway, this is just like a reminder. All right. So the main difference, which I'm sure we have mentioned in the past, for those of you that were IGCSC here, is that there is no space in Instagram. That's the main difference between the bar chart and the Instagram. Okay, and the histogram is for, for that continuous data. So continuity, no break in transmission. You can read, it's like a continuous function. If you say a function is continuous, it goes, right? But if you have like the pairwise function, uh, functions, where this stops here, and the other begins maybe somewhere here, then what is the continuity? There's a gap here, isn't it? Or maybe you have something like this, the other is also here, but they are not connected, then there's no continuity, isn't it? But if you have a function that goes like this, it, it continues. So similarly, if you have your bar chart or your column graph, as the case may be, if you're interested in the value here, nothing tells you the frequency, isn't it? Or the approximate say, frequency. But if it is an histogram, yes, you can still talk about the value in between them, okay? So that is why that is used for the continuous distribution data, okay? All right, so that's all about this. Mr. B, can you pass this out? So let's just practice this. Uh, the other one will be given either by the end of the class or I can find you later and give you the other one. Just to review, so we do not leave any stone on tongue especially for those of us that are not so familiar with this idea in the past. Keep on okay? Focus. If there's any question, talk to me, talk to people in your group, and watch out for the screenshot that I'm going to send to the group now. Uh, Miss V.